and welcome to another edition of the Mighty Movie Pod, episode number 79, almost the big 79. Oh wait, no, it is the big 79. Yes. Almost the big 80. Yeah. There you go. The big 80. That's a big one. That's a big one. It's 20 before the big 100. It's only taken us like 6 years to get this far. <laughs> True. <laughs> True. I mean, we put out 56 a, a year. I feel like we would have been further along. Yeah. How you doing, Josh? <laughs> I'm all right. Good to hear it. All, all things <laughs> considered. <laughs> Good, way to put that on film. Uh, <laughs> all right. Way to put that on the record. I know you're lying. So we're back. We have things to talk about. Plenty to talk about, in fact. A lot. We got through the big new blockbuster releases the last couple episodes. Uh, that was fun. Well, Cobra Kai. We yeah. did a we did a TV episode. We throw those. We in did from too. Time we did. To time. We did Mandalorian. We did Mandalorian. We did uh, w- which is as big as it gets to be honest. Uh, uh, yeah, dude. That's probably the biggest thing in Star Wars since its premiere. Yeah. 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 Um, you know, some Wonder Woman, but now. Let's go with the smaller things, Josh. Oh. There's plenty out there uh, that's still getting released. Uh, smaller shit, straight to streaming type shit, on demand shit. And we want to talk about it. Some stuff that's supposed to be released simultaneously. Sure. Yeah. I don't know how that's going, but uh, it's probably going I know it's going well for me. Yeah, it's going <laughs> fine for me as well. Uh and uh, still no fucking Black Widow, even though Warner Brothers has proven that it works. It's supposed to be coming out in May. We'll I see. don't. Uh, yeah, we'll fucking see. <laughs> we'll fucking see, dude. I, I, I just I don't know, man. I, you know, everybody made fun of WB with the DC thing and everything. And I was one of them. I'm still one of them because they're, you know, they've only just started to shine. Sure. Yeah. Um, But. Don't like, worry, all will be redeemed. Oh yeah, all's going to be fixed as soon as soon. we get that four-hour fucking move. <sighs> like this isn't this isn't the fifties anymore. I'm not I'm not looking to go to intermission in the middle of my movie because we're you know, going to have to because uh, oh dude yeah we're going to have to take this a break is on uh, that. this is like when we went to that Back to the Future film festival sure, like yeah. I mean because we've agreed we're going to have to watch this Justice League movie obviously. Um, it's just, you know this isn't the Ten Commandments. This isn't you know Ben Hur Gone with the Wind. This is a superhero movie that has now, already come out. That has already come, but this isn't the same movie. Like mm. that's the thing. This isn't the same movie. No. Everybody keeps talking about the cut. The Snyder no, it's cut. not a Snyder cut. Yeah. It's a Snyder. It's a Snyder movie. They're all over the place. On on first it was like oh it's a director's cut, but a new director's cut. And then they're like, no, we're just classifying it as a brand new movie, but using some of the, we'll get into that soon enough. Yeah. That's, that's coming next month. I feel like, I fucking hate to say this. We may need to watch the, the, the Wade and cut sure. again. And then I, I, and I'm saying like, we watched that days before. Oh, of watched. course. Yeah. Just to refresh. Cause just so I, we I, can remember what's been shot and what hasn't. I been watched. Shot. Yeah. I watched. Because the, I don't remember anything about. Justice I watched Lake. it in theaters never again, but no, that's a good, I, that's a really good point. Cause it would be beneficial for us to point out the differences and what was the same and what they reused and what they just straight up made as a new exactly. movie. Exactly. It's just, that's the only reason we want to watch it. We're not huge Zack Snyder fans. Uh, no, we weren't a big, we weren't big fans of the justice league movie. We thought it was okay. Yeah. I, I honestly thought it was a weak offering, but like when you, I'm holding it up to man of steel and BVS, I'm like, yeah, that's about par for the fucking course. Yeah. But like the oddity of it and yeah. what it is and how strange the whole situation is. Yeah. We kind of just got to see what's going on. With exactly. That. We have nothing to lose. Like, we have HBO max. Yeah, Whatever. Exactly. Exactly. That's my attitude about it. But still, I'm just like four hour fucking movie, dude, you indulgent, you know, just, uh, who do you think you are, dude? You know, like you're Zack Snyder. You're the slow mo guy. No one, 
I have. I'm not gonna do the Hans Zimmer thing again. Yeah, yeah. But like, and the trailers have been weird. Um, I don't know why this newest one was in four by three. Like, I understand yeah. they normally do that, like, so it can go on on like Instagram or or whatever. Yeah. But like, why was the official trailer put out in four by three? I also think it's stupid that we're because he's the meme, like a little foreshadowing to next week's episode. There are reasons to mess with yes aspect ratios. Yes, you mess um, with reality a bit, and you get the real and the not real. You get an idea of what's real, what's not real. Yes, and you're, doing you're this. also yeah. uh, acknowledging different eras mm-hmm. in and at what what was proper at the time. Um, exactly, Academy format. We're going to talk about one regular anamorphic week. widescreen, yeah. sixteen by nine, which is like HD television broadcast, which mm-hmm. a lot of DVD releases and stuff, Blu-ray, I guess yeah. I should say. Uh, adopts even if in the theater it was it was more of a 60 by 9 we watched tenant which we'll talk about a little bit and that's that's mostly just that you can see the the parts that were shot imax and the parts that weren't yeah but what the fuck that was weird too because it's just like everything looks really stretched and weird right now for no reason some of the shots it was just like why is this an imax yeah yeah a lot of that movie is why is this why is this? <laughs> that's a good, yeah, that's the only way to put that. But uh, but Zack Snyder putting out weird like four by three. Uh, I think he's Justice trying to Tarantino League. it up. What the fuck is this? Yeah, I think he's trying to Tarantino it, and it's like, dude, you're not Tarantino. I'm sorry, man. No, I'm sorry. I know that's probably a goal of yours, but it's never going Jesus. to be achieved. He's not. He's. I feel like he's not even set on the path yet. No, no, he has not. He has not come to that fork in the road yet. No. Whether he's Michael Bay or Tarantino. <laughs> I don't know. Dude, I don't know about that guy. I look forward to watching that movie, either. talking about it, and, and possibly indulging in some of the supplemental stuff because I feel like he's going to be out there talking a lot of shit. Because he's, he's already, already been, been talking yeah. shit. Yeah, dude. Like he And he was talking shit when he wasn't even working on it. You yeah. Know? When he about was... Wayden and about Marvel and like like everything that he's done the whole time. And I'm like, dude, why do we have to we fucking why not both? You know, exactly. It's, but when it comes to DC and Marvel things, I, I'm just like, just. and wait, yeah. And wait, wait. I mean, not liking Wade in is an easy thing to do right now. He's in hot water all the time. Yeah. He like. keeps fucking up. But uh, <laughs> yeah, apparently on the set of Buffy was never, never a good time with that guy. Why it's coming out now ish. I, I don't know. I, it's, but. it's odd. Um, It's odd. I, I know that. It's good that we're 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 going through all this stuff of and course. finding out who sucks and who doesn't. Yeah. But it's it is odd to me that all of a sudden we're just all jumping on Wade and shit, dude. Um, yeah. And I'm not saying that that I think he should be exempt of anything. No. Anything and like and, that, and, but, and of course, if and and it's nothing too severe. Apparently, he is just kind of he's, he's just kind a pain of in the ass, emotionally fucking harassing people on set. And yeah. Shit he's just like kind that. of a dick. Yeah. yeah. Um. Mm-hmm. He's not the first. Like he one. cheated like, on his wife and stuff like yeah, that. But, but from but what but I understand, like, it's nothing like it's no it's no me too shit. It's mostly but, just he's a nightmare. But what bothers me the most is that everybody still loves David O. Russell. <laughs> sure. And he is a huge piece of shit. Yeah. Like a huge piece of shit. Yep. I feel like his movies reflect the way conversations happen on the because it's just nine hundred people yelling at each other you in watch, a small room. Yeah, you watch him and in in fucking um, yeah, you uh, Jason Schwartzman's just sitting there like, oh jeez. Yeah, who uh, was that? Francis McDermott. France, uh, no, not Francis McDermott. Um, fuck, who was it? Another I know they're very yeah, I, yeah. I don't actress, remember, yeah. but. Yeah, man, I don't know. I don't know all the deets on that. I just I don't know. I just know that right now is a is an easy pickings time for him to talk some shit. Um, oh yeah, you know, and again, he's we, gonna because he can't shut his fucking mouth. Whatever, let him make his goddamn movie. We're gonna watch it. Well, like you go and listen to us. T- not even the, the Justice League, but we talked about it beforehand. Yeah, um, why he had to step away from the movie and stuff. We gave him our gave him our best. Yeah, like I, I still, you know, I'm still yeah. a human and yeah, he's still another human. But at the same course. time, like yeah. the guy makes shit movies, yeah, dude. Of I'm co- sorry. Of course. So <laughs> I like, haven't enjoyed a movie of his since Dawn of the Dead. Ex- exactly. It, it wasn't like a Brian Singer situation. Like the guy had a yeah. really, a really, you know, tragic thing happen and, and he had to leave the movie. So if. if hmm, speaking he, of monsters. <laughs> yeah. And if he, uh, and if he really wanted the to come back and like felt like that was, you know. 
if that was really weighing on him that he wasn't able to make the movie that he really wanted to make and yeah, he didn't like I, what Wade and did, I can't really fault him for wanting to do his thing. No. But like, don't just do it. Don't be on Twitter being yeah. like, being like when somebody said like, okay, it looks like the same movie. It was like a film reviewer. And he's like, well, from your review of the original release, you thought that it was like, can't be fun. So you're going to hate this. Cause it's a big boy movie for big boys. That's what he's been saying the whole time. And I'm yeah. like, yeah. bro, he's been saying that since man of steel, where he's just like, Oh, you little Marvel fucks. Yeah. And you're like enjoying movies. Well, now I'm gonna make you super sad and hate superheroes. Cause I hate superheroes. <laughs> And it's also where that WB is letting it. I mean, again, circum- any press is good cir- press, dude. The circumstances and like I understand probably why they're letting them do it, and it's still it's still something to put out on HBO yeah. Max. But like, they've thrown away everything that he's created. Yeah. Oh like, yeah. With, they've gone off and made much better products. And like, they're handing to off- say that Wonder Woman is their weakest entry so far is a compliment. Oh of, yeah. Because it is still better than the Zack Snyder movies. Yeah. His whole Suicide plan Squad. has been thrown the fuck out. Yeah. So like nobody's sure. Go ahead and remake the thing that sucked and we exactly. and we scrapped. They, well, uh, and now Patty Jenkins and fucking and yeah. and uh, uh, James Gunn and 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 they're all doing their own thing. And what's his name who makes Shazam and all that. Yeah. The, the horror director the horror guy yeah, yeah I can't be God lights out guy the lights out guy yeah. yeah um yeah dude like we walked away from that like there are still lingering bits where you know like, sure i feel like we can't get it together exactly what's going on and 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 it's so confusing it is we got to move on from this yeah we'll be back to this topic but again the reason yeah, well, I, yeah, yeah the, the reason i said that is because we're not doing any of that today we are going to Get into some bigger IP stuff next week, but we want to hit on all the random bullshit that we watch. That's kind of smaller and maybe streaming service, maybe just, you know, uh, video on demand stuff and also tenant for a little bit, but yeah. What do you want to start talking about first, Josh? Let's just get tenant out. Of Let's the get way. it out of the way. It'll be easy. That movie isn't good. <laughs> <laughs> It's so bad. Other other than other just, than Christopher, I'm just glad that you came right out and you didn't even beat around the bush. You're no. like, yeah, let's get into it. That movie sucks. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's not it's not good. No, I it didn't. Really isn't. I didn't enjoy myself. Other than it is the most Nolan-y Nolan film that has ever. It's very much him drinking his own Kool Aid. Sure, sure. I can do whatever I want. It doesn't have to make sense. <laughs> and other, you can just watch it 400 times and convince yourself it makes sense. Other than there's nothing really to enjoy about it other nope. than he is capable of 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 ma- pulling off good sequences and frames and 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 making things look pretty good. Yes, but when you're it not is in, a beautiful film, but when you're not invested. When you're not invested in anything, the you locations are drab, the performances are are dra- like I was like, all right, uh, this is one of the It felt like the, the, and uh, it, in Pattinson's Sorry. fucking. This is one of his first bigger roles. Yeah, I enjoyed. I did enjoy. And he him was in the fine. Movie. Yeah, but, like, but he had nothing to nothing do. to do. Nobody had anything. To he do. was. He was. He was Nolan's clever, funny character who sure. was never very clever and never very funny. Sure. Um, it felt like uh the buildup of every Daniel Craig Bond movie <laughs> without any of the payoffs that come with any of the Daniel Craig uh Bond movies. He couldn't pick a lane Speaking while he was which, riding it. Speaking of dude, I did not know that uh, the the to sidetrack here. I didn't know that uh, No Time to Die is a Kerry Fukunaga movie. I did not know that either. Yeah, dude, I I just saw uh, an article about Kerry Fukunaga and No Time to Die, and I was like, what the fuck well, now is I'm... this? So like, before we get too into it, I saw his name as the director. Let's let's look into it before okay. we, we really get into sure. it. But uh yeah, dude, I, I just realized I said you be- that you believe you believe he may be involved. Yeah. In that. We'll he, double check that. And I love Kerry Fukunaga. So Yeah. So do I. I yeah. For sure. I, I know that. <laughs> I mean come on. I, but dude, I loved Beast of No Nation. I loved True Detective season one. True Detective and Maniac are some of my favorite. I don't Maniac like TV. Maniac is really good. Yeah. And t- those are some of my favorite. Well, they're mini series, but like yeah. some of my favorite shit ever. Um, Maniac Dude, was really We need good. to go back and watch season one of True Detective. I have not point. watched it again. I haven't either. And so, I need to review it, dude, just because. I wonder I, if it'll still live up. Maybe I, that's I, I, I think so. I'm scared. To I, go yeah, back. I, I think that too. Or I'm just like, ooh. What if I go back and it's not good? Yeah. But like, then I see, I catch scenes because somebody's always posting something from it. And I'm just like, yeah, dude. Yeah, it's good. 
this is legit. Like we were watching uh that best of uh uh of of of, of something and they they had cut it in as a joke oh, at yeah, one point yeah, yeah. and I was like, God, that scene's so good, you know? Yeah. Um but yeah, dude. Anyway, um, anyway. If, you, if you know we want to talk about anything besides tenant. Yeah, exactly. Uh dude, I I just I <laughs> The main character's name is protagonist. Yes. Like how d- you lazy fuck. Dude. John Everyman. Yeah, yeah, dude. John Everyman would have been a better <laughs> effort than I don't know, protagonist. Well, who's the antagonist? I I was unclear about that. Uh time. No, I <laughs> no. I um I've looked at people's earnest attempts yes. to figure out the timeline yes. so and what's I. going on with that. And it almost reads as parody. It does. You've heard me talk about Kingdom Hearts. Yes. It has, a, it has exact, that kind of vibe no, to dude, me. Dude, I know exactly what you're talking about because I felt the same way when yeah. I looked into it. Because I was like, am I that retarded? Nolan movies are easy to fucking get. Yeah. Norm- and they're generally stupid. And Exactly. Normally, I would write it off and just be like, oh, whatever. Like, it's a bad movie. But it, it, it hurts and I, I say this a lot. It hurts a little bit when like no one has a reputation. So there, there's a little bit of that there, but when somebody makes one of your favorite movies ever, and then like their next yeah. attempt is just fucking garbage. Yeah. You're just kind of like, I know you're better than this. Yeah. I know you're better than this. Oh, Even yeah. the ones that I don't care so much well, for, to, like to the refer- Batman's to, and to, to reference again, uh, Patty Jenkins. Like, yeah. Fucking I've loved most of Patty Jenkins movies. His last Wonder Woman movies, a fucking piece of crap. I'm not sure if she's cut out to screenwrite. Uh, no, maybe es- obviously, especially directs. from she directs very well. Yeah. Of, of course. Yeah. yeah no, uh, she directs the direction in this movie is fine. <laughs> <laughs> I I don't know how everybody does their job. Sure. And I'm sure that they did the job that Nolan told them to do. I just don't think he's that good a filmmaker. He's okay. like Ridley Scott. See, I, I said this the other day. He's like Ridley <laughs> Scott without the years behind him to become. See, this and asshole. and this is and this is where it gets weird for me because I'm just like I don't think I've I, maybe I haven't sold it to you enough. Dunkirk is damn near a perfect movie for Dunkirk me. is the <laughs> Dunkirk is the first movie since uh, the Prestige that I was that impressed by with Nolan. Yeah. So like, you know, two out of how many, you know? Sure. And it had some Nolanisms in it. With it had the, a lot with, of Nolanisms. With like, we're, we're jumping back and forth and doing some of that, but like, but it was still, you understood exactly. They're, they're, they put time codes. So exactly, like, exactly. okay, they're crossing the channel. This is what's happening with them. This is day two, whatever. And anyone that's seen a Tarantino movie knows how it, to watch sure. that type of film. Yeah. That's not, yeah, that's not even it, dude. Again, it has timestamps. You can follow the story. I, I I get a little annoyed when people talk about Dunkirk and they're just like, it's too confusing. And I'm like, mm. how's it confusing? It makes perfect sense. It all lines up. Conjoining stories. That's it. Or yeah, yeah. stories that are all coming together. Yeah, exactly. Um, from one event. And they don't even hide that. Mm-mm. They let you know from the from the get-go. But so that's what's so frustrating when it's just like, oh, okay. Like he just is like, no, I make movies like Inception, but I'm going to go fucking even worse with it. Yeah. Uh, bro. You're why, why are you doing this, man? Yeah. And that, and that's the thing because you're like, I don't know. He just doesn't make films that good. I was like, it's not true. I think he gets in his own way I, of like, I, that's, that's he's like, that's con- what I'm trying he's like to Kanye. say. Kanye. Like as time goes on and he's like, I'm a genius. It just gets worse. Everybody keeps saying I'm a genius. Yeah. I am a genius. And I'm like, and I'm like, you know, fucking you fuck up. It's a pretty, lot, it's dude. Pretty, your, your shit's pretty good, but like you're getting out of control now. Yeah. It's, mm, I don't know, bro. A broke clock can be wrong twice. Sure. What? <laughs> No. <laughs> yeah. We'll go with that. <laughs> sure. Let's stay alone. with that. Fucking it's just not it's just not good. It's it not isn't. even that it's confusing or I don't get it. I don't find it enthralling in any meaningful Nothing way. Nothing intrigued me. No. I'm not There's no character by the, I'm not invested by the characters. Yeah. yeah. No. Everything seems to happen because the plot has to happen. Again, the guy can the guy can put together some very well-structured sequences and shots. And they look fuck. 
he does. <laughs> I know. You can follow like the way that you can follow through. I'm just trying to be a contrarian. Try like to follow through like them. They're starting from point A to point B in one sequence, right? And the way that it flows and the way that it's filmed is very good. But I don't know what's happening. I don't care about these characters, and it's in a pretty drab location. Everything, lot everything of, is that's so that takes everything out of it. Even if the technical bo- aspect is okay. Yeah, the 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 color scheme mm-hmm. is for the movie is just like it's either cold blues or browns. Browns. That's it. So like. I'm looking at it as a technical, mm-hmm. technical thing, but like that has the technical prowess has to feed into the creative exactly. and artistic fucking of that scene or sequence. Exactly. So exactly. I get what you're saying. We're saying the same thing. Is yes. What I'm saying. Oh yeah. 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 It's just, uh, just I, I, it, and I think that's why inception over this one shines mm-hmm. to me because like, I was very invested in DiCaprio's character. I, sure. I I wanted to know more about him. I actually wanted to know and, more about the whole team. Yeah, and, and but, DiCaprio and 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 Joseph Gordon Levin and stuff, like they are much Pattinson didn't get it Robert Pattinson didn't didn't get his due in this movie. No. But no offense to Denzel's kid. I'm sure that he's gonna do great stuff. But yeah. I was just like Ugh. He's no Leo, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah dude. I, he doesn't I've have a screen him, presence like that. I I have enjoyed him in other projects. So I know he's got he's got some chops. This I feel like a Nolan movie is not where you go to shine. It's where you I don't think so either. Go no. to be part of something pretentious. It's weird. Yeah, he <laughs> he he seems to always want to get established guys and that was what was so interesting when I first saw the movie is Robert Pattinson and and I'm sorry, I can't remember your name, Denzel's kid. Um, that's what I was so, I was kind of so interested in it. Um, I knew that there was time loop bullshit and I was like, ugh, I don't care. But yeah. that Dunkirk though, um, and and he did that with, you know, smaller names as well. I mean, yes. fucking Harry Styles was in that movie for God's sake. And he was pretty good. Oh yeah. It's just. I think the biggest names he had were like Kenneth Branagh mm-hmm. and uh, Tom Hardy. And that was it. Yeah. Uh, it had Mark Rylance. I was gonna in say it. Mark Rylance was in it for a bit. Actually, <laughs> Which, now that I think about you it. know, and, from uh, Ready Player One, wasn't uh, Find My Hidden Egg. You don't have a bazillion, bazillion million dollars. Million dollars. <laughs> I haven't seen Ready Player One. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that. That's all I needed to see. Um, I hated the book, so why the fuck would I bother with the movie? You, so you haven't read Ready Player Two then? Why would I read eight six seven five three zero nine? Oh my god! I read that bit that you sent me in a text. <laughs> yeah. I was so angry because not only does the door is the door the door is a reference, and I can't remember what every the door, door was. is yeah. a reference, dude. I don't remember all of it, but that entire paragraph that you sent me is just it'll have here's like a par- all this shit that I know. <laughs> it'll have a parenthetical just to like explain in case you didn't get the reference because it's like. It's like eight six seven five three zero nine, and then like parentheses, like thanks, Tommy Two Tone. <laughs> Fuck me, dude. <laughs> I, Every gunter should know that. I hate that man as a writer. Also, what are they, <laughs> dude? I I need to read the synopsis for Ready Player Two because what are they doing? I thought we resolved why it in the you, first one. Why are you going so what, deep into this? What egg are they? Why are you I don't know. Because I'd rather talk about anything besides dinner. <laughs> like, it's just, it's so easy. Like, we're having an okay discussion about it, and I, I'm enjoying it. But it is so easily just, it's not very good. And I... No, it's what like it, you re- said. Yeah, sure, let's talk about Tenet. That movie's not any good. And yeah. that was the way I you wouldn't recommend it. it. No. And I don't have a lot of positive things to say about it. I have it. nothing to say. I've said everything I'm going to say about that movie. Yeah. It's just, just don't watch it. And I almost never. Please. Do, I almost never leave it at that. Oh, no. Especially on this podcast. No, that, that movie is almost three hours of a waste of time. You can do My wife got up and left. She did. She, I forgot about that. She, she just, started watching dude, it and she left. We weren't even at the halfway point no. yet. And she got up and left. And then I was like trying to figure out what was happening. And you yelled at me for looking at my phone. And I, look, I was like, I'm trying to figure out what's happening. You're like, watch the movie. I said, okay, Ryan, you've watched the whole movie. What's going on? And you were like. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It'll come together, I'm sure. No. It that like No. It ends where it begins. There you go. There's sure. the big reveal. Yeah. And that's abundant. Oh, I guess clear. we should say that 
there's a machine that makes you go backwards in time. Yeah, math is so the you, villain. So you have to breathe. Math is the MacGuffin? You have to breathe reverse air, <laughs> which I believe is true. You're not breathing air. There's no air to breathe because it's yeah. already been breathed. And then when you're firing, Bro-brothed. when you're firing reverse bullets, they like come out of people. It's all really weird. The only okay, uh, okay, I have one positive thing to say. When they had the the two rooms where the one that was the best where the part one of is the going film. forward and the one is going backwards, and they use that in like as a, a reverse inter- interrogation. interrogation technique. That actually was. The only clever thing that, that he was did with extremely it. clever. Yeah. I, I will agree with you on that. That was the best part of the entire movie. But I'm like, okay, but, what you have but to then sit. I didn't but then I didn't know what we had learned from all that. Exactly. You have to sit through like an hour and a half to get to that point. And yeah. it's like, oh, finally this is somewhat interesting. And then it's over immediately and then it's just back to boring. And the fact that it didn't the fact that it didn't kind of live up to what I thought was gonna happen, which that's a Star Wars fan kind of thing to say, but <laughs> sorry, assholes. And uh, get them. The fact that I was like, okay, I see where this is going. We're going to end up where we were at the beginning and then figure out what the fuck was going on there at the beginning. Yeah. And that didn't happen, although it kind of did. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. It's not very good. I don't recommend it. Um, I think it's. I think it's sort of a waste of time, and there's not a lot of. Um, it's not a lot of positives to take out of it. I think it's drab. I think that it is. It is long. Long, it's, and we both love long, dry, boring sure. films. Mm-hmm. This is not one of those times because no. usually in those long, dry, boring films, there's at least a character to latch onto. There's nothing to latch onto in this. Any character that shows, like Michael Caine's in it for a little bit, and like. <clears throat> When you, uh, when something <laughs> Michael like, Caine, who probably insisted on sitting down and right, eating food, right? While but he like, did his scene. in something like Inception, when somebody shows up for like a little bit, they're usually like, he would at least be like, they have to be a little eccentric and like, they're kind of just going with the flow or they have their own thing going on. Like, he just shows up and like delivers some dialogue and then is like, I don't fucking care. That's the thing. Nobody that, fucking cares. That's the thing about this Adam, movie is it is ninety percent exposition for an idea that does not seem fully formed, and no one cares about. Yeah, delivering like kick. Any of yeah, it. like kick ass. Like he should have been the. I can't. <laughs> Aaron Taylor. Aaron Taylor, Aaron Johnson. Taylor Johnson. See, Aaron Taylor Johnson. We'll talk more about him later. But Aaron yes. Taylor Johnson, I don't like that because of Anna Taylor Joy, <laughs> <laughs> and she is she's more prevalent than he is at this. It, it messes with my brain. Anyway, <laughs> Kickass's character is like <laughs> stupid. Is so is, stupid. is like finally like I'm on top. Like he knows everything that's going on apparently. Yeah. And but like, he knows the entire thing, and so does Robert Pattinson. But maybe yeah, because well, he's done it all before. Yeah. Oh, fuck this movie. And no, and like we like talking through that thing, those kind of things. Like it's okay if it doesn't make perfect sense, as long as it's like fun. But like it wasn't fun. That's what I'm saying. Like he knew what was going on and he was like ready to tell him he was dumb, but he was kind of just like, I'll figure it out. And he was like, oh, whatever. And I was like, really? There's no like, we're going to try to, (sighs) dude. Because he recruited him. He knew he'd figure it out. He doesn't need to talk to him. He's done this 40 times. We're done. We're done talking about Inception. Inception. No. (laughs) We've been done talking about Inception forever. Tenant. Tenant. It's a palindrome. You get it? Yeah. Forward and back. It's not really a time loop It's the movie. same forward as it is backwards. Yeah, it's not really a time travel movie as much as it is a time manipulation. Yeah, it's, movie. it's not a time it's not time travel, but it's time no. travel, but it's not time travel. Sure. You're That's just stupid. moving through time at real time, but in reverse. God damn it. But do you still age? I don't know if they talked about that. I don't know. See, I'm even searching for fun things to talk about. Right. With like, do you de-age when you go back because you're reversing that time? Or is it they still They did talk about carbon time? dating something at one point. They and they said it carbon dated from the future, which I didn't think made any sense. How does that happen? <laughs> How do you carbon date something forward in time? You fucking can't. <laughs> You idiot! Am I making that up, or did that happen? No, that was when they were talking about all the artifacts and yeah. she that the, the, the most one of the most pointless cameos because I like that lady a lot. Can't think of her name right now. Yeah, um, I remember her. Yeah, uh, did she she was a Bond girl. Um, yes, she's uh she's explaining to him what all the artifacts that they find from from the period from yeah, from and then all. they start shooting the guns and. 
Yeah, and then they go into the special effects shit, and they're like, look how cool this looks. And it's like, Yo, dude, I'm trying to get into this. Do more lore. That's what I want. More world building. Sure. And there is none. Well, the world Fuck was going to end for whatever reason from one guy with a yacht. I because don't know. Because math is bad. Oh, yeah, the algorithm. <laughs> yes, the algorithm is the MacGuffin in the movie. But without and it, algorithm but without is it how did they go just back? like seven hair dryers hooked up together. <laughs> I was confused. In a, let's talk about Psycho Goreman. Okay, <laughs> a movie that makes perfect sense. I love that we go from this like pseudo wannabe intellectual bullshit movie to Psycho to Gore Psycho Goreman. Like I need bottom him. of the barrel, and we're like the movie's great. <laughs> I wouldn't say great. I wouldn't either. That movie's got a lot of problems, but I think it's pretty good, and I enjoyed myself a lot. I I, I think en- you have to have. I think you. It's 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 trying to be a little too much. Yeah, I I think I enjoyed it a little bit less than you, yeah. and uh, I've heard it said that you either like or hate this movie and i kind of disagree i think we're both in the center we're just on different sides yeah. of the center with this movie because we've talked I'm about more it a bunch. i'm more favorable leaning and you're leaning more towards yeah that. i i i don't think the little girl deserves all the hate that she's been getting over it uh you're I, not allowed to be mean to child actors it's just not a thing you're allowed to do <laughs> you shouldn't do that they are our casting agents that make these things happen exactly and i think she did a good job it's just that the joke of her character gets old really there fucking was fast. they didn't have anything to level her out that was the one thing that i i've heard it said <laughs> i think i know where you're going with this that and you could I, easily just uh, dismiss a lot of things with this movie of that's the point yeah however i think everybody just kind of being awful and everything just kind of sucking um was a little grating like nobody ever like bad like terrible shit would happen and i thought it was kind of funny yeah. when they would just brush it off yeah but like that becomes the entire only like thing. one time does she ever even really care if the whole world is going to be destroyed sort of once she cared sort of and her dad gave her some tarot i like the fucking dad the dad a lot. kills me but you need someone to. There, but see, you're mix. You're mixing your comedies exactly. with the dad, and and I think it's fine. I think it works. But yeah. like early on, you think like, oh, he's just like the overly like lax, chill dad, chill dad. Yeah. and then like randomly, he's talking about how he was in Iraq. And there's this weird scene where they hold on him forever. And I, you were not laughing, and I was laughing hysterically. I laughed. I thought that scene was hilarious. With him when he's just staring at her. You're welcome. Yeah, he just, just staring You're welcome. at the mom. Like, I, I made delicious dinner for I my family. I made a delicious dinner for And it's family. just, and she's like, it's a fucking mess. And he's just like unblinking, almost teary-eyed, being like, you're welcome. Yeah, no, that shit fucking <laughs> killed me. I can't believe you don't remember. I don't remember. That. Sorry, I was just, I thought it was the funniest shit I've ever seen. Uh, yeah, no, no, dude. The dad killed me through the whole movie. That yeah, but was then all of a sudden funny. they have marital problems and like, it, it, it's, it's like, well, they were leading so up to much the, going they on. They lead up to the, to the marital problems through the whole thing because like, sure. she's taking jabs at him when he's just like, oh no, my hand, I can't. Oh. Yeah, yeah, and she's yeah. like, oh wow, that happened real quick. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, She's, See, but I thought that was yeah. But early on, I felt that that was more. And then like there's a, the chicken uh, thing where she's pretty pissed about the chicken thing. Sure. He, he cooked a whole chicken in the microwave. It's his famous chicken. It's his famous. It's chicken. a little tough, but the flavor. But it saves the flavor. It's true. Um, and he also makes a mess of it. No, dude. Uh, I heard the girl compared to Cartman. Yeah, and that you I have that. to enjoy it if you enjoy Cartman. But the thing that makes Cartman funny is that he has Kyle and Stan to balance. And everybody off of. says he's an idiot. And there's he's not no the leader one, of exactly, the group. Exactly. There's no one in this movie that that bounces off that girl. Exactly. That's what I mean. Yeah. It's it's it. There's no counter. Everybody is just awful. Yeah. Everybody sucks. Even the mom, who's supposed to be the better character in the movie. Like early on, you think like. It's, Psycho Gorman is about an alien that comes. <laughs> I was getting to that early on when she when when they're playing their dumb game. I forget what it was called. Crazy ball. Crazy ball. And if he if the brother loses, he has to get buried alive. And it's like this kind of quirky, fun kind of thing. Yeah, relationship. It was very you, funny for you, the first you, half of the movie. Yeah, you think that's going on, and then she's like, 
burying him for real and you're like all right they're taking this a little far like the kids like they have a good sense of humor in relationship but she but gets... then instantly they find something in the ground yes and the movie kind of starts it's a it's a crystal to to control or in control or imprison depending on if it's attached to the thing or enslaved not, I control in prison yeah um a, a terrible being of power called Psycho Gorman. She named they the kids name him Psycho Gorman. He does not have his name was the his title the king of nightmares. Yeah, something like that. The king yeah. of nightmares or something like that. Yeah. And then you realize that like that wasn't really like a little bit between them. Like nope. she is just a crazy person. Yeah, she's just terrible. And the brother she is was just gonna like be, a little pussy bitch. I thought that we were gonna get like a Louise kind of character mm-hmm. who's actually a good person just wants to be When it comes to down to it, terrible. she's making jokes and saying yes. bad things, but like she loves and cares about her family. I'm not sure this girl actually does. No, she is a straight up psychopath. Yes. And we establish that later in the movie when she straight up tells uh, Psycho Gorman to murder her brother. <laughs> and then that's just tossed aside. It is. Like she has this incredibly dark arc where we're watching yeah. a, the rise of a supervillain, basically. Those cops and then, show up and that shit goes down and she just is kind of like, all right, can we get back to the game? And then fucking, what's his, I can't remember that her, her crush's name. Um, fuck, Alex, no. Um, the kid's friend, the one who Arthur? turns into a giant brain. Arthur? Yeah, Arthur. We'll just call him Arthur. Whatever. The giant Arthur. brain. Yeah, the giant. Yeah. And then she just goes and is like, oh, you're leaving? And like has this sad story about like, I want to be normal again. She's like, eh, probably she's not. She's just like, you're fine. I like you just the way well, you, you are. are. Yeah. And he, she had him turned into a giant brain. Yes. Which is what we end the movie on as well. And I was hoping that they were going to resolve that. No, double, I thought that was And they was doubled funny. down on it. Yeah, I thought that was funny where like even his parents don't give a shit. Like everyone in this movie <laughs> is a terrible person. Yes. And that's cool. That's fine. But you need some counterbalance. Sure. Like, like the guy that's always telling you, yo, you're screwed up, finally gets screwed over. And then the world bows to your feet or whatever. Dr. Horrible yeah. has a good way of doing that. Mm-hmm. Um, I I enjoyed this movie for about half of it. And then the uh, the other half, the final half, I was just kind of like, this needs to end. Yeah. Um, I still think people should watch it because it's a it's a good cheesy it's, time. It's very creative. It's got very a lot. Creative. It's got good, a lot of um, good costume design, practical effects, miniatures. Yeah, I, I like I liked the stop motion in it. And that everything Psycho Gorman does is pretty good. It's it's yeah. really the girl and the fact that like it that she is as awful as he is. Yes. And they bond over that, but it isn't like that he learns from her. He still goes and destroys the world. And she let him do it, yeah. And it was that it's just it it doesn't sit in your brain right. And no, maybe, no. Maybe the, you this think movie, that's hilarious. Yeah, and if that works for you, then this movie is probably really good. I did enjoy the ending of the movie. Sure. I thought that was hilarious. That like, nah, he, the, they just let him go blow up the world, go. but they're gonna be fine. Yeah, and and the dad's terrible fucking advice, <laughs> which was fucking primo. And, you should uh, totally let him do it. <laughs> And I had an awesome time, and I'm glad that I put my faith in that strange weirdo. Um, <laughs> that, that's the one that I died at, dude. Because yes. it's like he said, "Want some candy? Want to see my baseball cards?" And, and then I, I got in his van. And he showed me his huge, and he showed me his huge, beautiful baseball card collection. <laughs> yeah. That part killed me. That was super funny. And like, yeah, maybe if your brain works for like, I, you're like, I get it. This is fucking just insane and everything sucks and it's just meant for fun. I agree. But I think that that kind of takes away a little bit from it because like you want to be able to, there's connect. no stakes. You want to be able to connect with people or have stakes. Like there's no the, stakes. Be able to insert yourself yeah. into that story. Exactly. Exactly. Um, to, to the smallest degree, at least. Yeah. yeah. Um, and again, like I don't think it's a love it or hate it. I'm right down the middle with it. We're yeah. like I I enjoyed parts. I enjoyed the overall creativity. The everything Psycho Gorman. The comedy is very is good. It's yeah. very good. It's just like I said, the the girl and her shtick gets a little old. The random like little little things where like 
something's not right, but people just roll with it. Like yeah. that's always funny. Like when the dad finally gets to the the warehouse they were keeping him in, he's like, "Oh, this TV just won't stop bleeding." Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he's like messing with the antenna and like banging the side of it. He's like, this TV's not going to stop bleeding. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, and that was dude. a cool little practical effect they did when the TV started bleeding and he re- went into the techno verse yeah. to find his followers who were fine with him being gone. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh, overall, I would say watch it. Um, it's worth a view if you want to sure. watch a good cheesy time. Have sure. A good, have some fun with it. It's, yeah. It's, if, it's a good time. It's just, depending on who you are, that girl could be funny all the way through. She could wear out her welcome real quick. Uh, she wore out her welcome for me, even though I still kind of like laughed at some of the stuff that was going on later on. It was just like, there's no conflict here. There's no stakes. There's no, yeah. there's, there's nothing here. It's just, let's be huge pieces of shit for an hour and a half. Yeah. And they had like, the final confrontations were dragged out a little mm. bit. That was a, there was a little bit of a pacing issue. Yeah, I feel like uh, this had a very small script. Yeah, but they wanted uh, to to make a feature length time. Sure, and and, and they it, and they had ideas for costumes and and jokes, yeah. but they didn't really flush it into the they no, didn't flush um, it out in the plot. Very I well. thought that the alien council was some of the funniest parts of the movie. Agreed. I. I I loved that brain in a jar guy. Mm-hmm. Um, and the one dude that was just totally self-serving, but also the smartest dude in the room. Yep. Where he's just pulls all out of, the gun and he's like, so who goes first? <laughs> yeah. Also, yeah. Also the creature. Yeah. The creature designed for them, the, for psycho Gorman's followers were good. The, the, the rich Evans of, of red letter media fucking playing. Just, I, I called him meat bucket. Yeah. I didn't know yeah. what his name was. It just as like, all right, I spray blood out of my hands. Yeah, yeah like, he's got these big old cannons on his arm, and all they do is shoot blood. Yeah. I thought that was hilarious. Completely useless. Fucking. He just comes. Like a, <laughs> there's like a witch, and there's like other dumb things. The witch things. was genuinely creepy. Uh, I liked the. Uh, there was a certain uh, canon films. Masters of the Universe feel to sure. the to the evil henchmen to them. One of them in particular makes me think of like a cross between Skeletor and whoever the little beast guy follower is. The guy with the claw on his hand. It, anybody that's seen the canon Master uh, Masters of the Universe movie knows what I'm talking about. Uh, there's there was a there was a there was a certain Masters of the Universe feel to it. Uh, I enjoyed it very much. I keep hearing it referred to as an EC parody. But I got more like suburban commando where the family gets access to this super powered alien and like he learns how to be a good neighbor. Yeah. You know, or, or fights for the American way or, or, or whatever or, or learns the. Yeah. With the ways. marketing, yeah. they're doing the PG thing. So like they're going yeah. a little E.T. with it. But I think that might just be another joke. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I see. I thought that PG stood for like, yeah, like PG. it because it was not a PG rated movie. I, I exactly. I don't know what they were going with for that, but no, it's 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 a it's no Turbo Kid, but it's got no. it's got the same feel of guys who just uh, people who want to make fucking uh, Ryan. I'm a guy. <laughs> She's a guy. I know. We're all guys. I know. It's I okay. just yeah, of people who just want to like really love cinema and, and kind of that B movie stuff. And like some of the artistry and the, and the stuff that went into that. I appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, but I think everybody here did a really good job and I, I, I do appreciate, I, I like low budget movies. I really do. And this, this shines. It's, yep. it's good. It, you know, I, and I say that admitting that I didn't enjoy a lot of the lighter half of the movie, but that's just because one of the jokes got on my nerves. Sure. Like the rest of it is, is quality. Like everybody here tried really hard and mm-hmm. they succeed. It's, it's very good. I, I love all the stop animation stuff that they do in there because you know, like I, I love that. They didn't even bother with the shitty, like asylum movies, bad, bad CGI. So they're going, they did the, oh, yeah, they did the right thing. Mm-hmm. They just went with this, these puppets and these claymations. Like when he's, when he's driving the huge mech and it's smashing yeah. houses and you just see that crappy clay foot smash a clay house. That shit killed me. It Mini- was so funny. Yeah, miniatures, rubber suits, fucking all that. Stop excellent, all excellent great. stuff. Yeah. Um, cool it's, soundtrack, too. It's, yeah, it's definitely worth a rent. 
and and it will inevitably show up on 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 Shutter because sure. I think Shutter yes. put money. I think it's a it. Shutter movie. Yeah, um, very very good. So for sure, Psycho Goreman. Psycho Goreman. Give it give it a watch. Have have some fun. Give it a watch. Yeah, for sure. There's not you know, it's a good like I want to waste a little bit of time and be dumb for a bit. Like that's and that's 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 fine. While you're waiting on the next show, you're gonna binge or whatever. Give it exactly. Exactly. Or you're waiting for you know. The, a Tom Brothers. Hanks movie. Yeah, or you're waiting for the newest Tom Hanks movie. Oy. I'm the king of segways. That was pretty good. That's your. I don't. I'm not sure how often you do the segways. I don't think was, I've ever. You but usually that was, do them. But that was pretty good. Yeah. All right, Josh. Well, you got to keep going with it. All right. Let's talk about news of the world. Also, not very good. It's not very good. <laughs> it's 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 not a shit show. No. It's just predictable. A lot of cliches. Tom Hanks is amazing in the movie. The little girl is amazing in the movie. Uh, News of the World is uh, set post Civil War in the late eighteen hundreds, and we have a, a a man in Texas, and we have a man traveling the country delivering the headlines. He's basically the the old West's version of Kent Shotnick. Yeah, and honestly, <laughs> that's kind of just the setup. Yeah, um, um, has little to do with the movie, which it has very little to do with it, except for in one town. Part of except the for in except for one town, uh, which I I enjoyed. that was the be- that was the best of the movie. That was probably. the best part of the movie. Um, Although, I mean, it's a little. I was gonna say, depending on who you are, you might be like topical politics. Fuck. Yeah, it's it's a little on the nose. They're not really shying away from what they're doing in that scene, and uh, but I appreciated it for for what it was. So you know? I. Um. I don't want to say I didn't enjoy the movie. I think I was just kind of let down a bit by it because it's very dry, very long. It's things that I like. Very dry. Very, very character driven. Very long and very dry. And that was what I liked about it the most. Exactly. I was, just, I was laying on my couch. I didn't have a bother in the world nope. for, for while I was watching that movie. But then afterwards I went, well, shit, I'm never going to think of that movie. Again. That's a problem. Yeah. That's the problem with it is I, I think that it's, it's kind of one of those just middle of the road movies where you're like, damn, that sucks. Yeah. I think Paul Greengrass, the director, you may know him. I do like Paul. Greengrass. I was going to say you may know him because he's directed a lot of uh, action. movies. Yes. He did uh, the Bourne movies. Yep. Um, he's very, very good when someone's there to rein him in. Sure. And I think that no, because like, I think he actually did the last Bourne movie and that's the he worst did. one. He did. I, I, I know people, shit all over uh the jeremy renner born movie but i enjoyed that one i think that the final born movie is the absolute worst movie because nobody there was saying you know paul don't don't do this yeah and i feel like there's a lot going on in this movie where he's like no 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 let's hang out here for longer and it's like no dude this, this shot's done we can move along yeah i i just think that like maybe he was like this was just one of his dream projects. I think something. it was because it feels like a labor of love. And it, kind and of movie. it, it focuses more on like kind of the life of somebody of that time, a lot more than they usually include. Yes. Usually it's more glamorized. And then this one, it's kind of just, it is very raw. It's pretty just raw and kind of dry. Yeah. Um, like Tom Hanks, the, his character's life sucks. Yeah. Yeah, it does. And, um, yeah, Captain. He he directed Captain Phillips as well. I I, I liked Captain Phillips enough. Oh, that was another one for me. That was exactly like this one where I sure. was just kind of like, "Yep, mm-hmm. Tom Hanks is doing sure. a good job." So maybe that's just what his thing is these days. I don't know, but it's weird. The guy who made you know Born Supremacy and Ultimatum and all that stuff is like identity and everything. Yeah, yeah. It's just like, nah, dude. Yeah. No, I'm gonna start doing this. This guy, ships. It kind of this it, guy, it, fucking wagon. You know, I like <laughs> that's that's a good way of putting it. <laughs> anyway, same dude, ship and wagon. Yeah. So let me talk more about it. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm talking about the director and shit. It is that's important. I know, but it, it is somewhat about uh, what he does as a profession. But it's also that he's sort of running. Of the, he's sort of kind running of the, away from his own yeah, problems by I, I wanna, constantly I, traveling. I want to say his career is probably the C plot. A plot is him and the girl. Yes. B plot is him trying to deal get away. We deal with his own emotional problems. Yeah. His past. 
and C is definitely the move. That only comes to the forefront in that mining town. Yeah. Or that that trapper town. It's got like a uh it's got like a section that's pretty rough, like where those dudes are just kind of like, we're going to take this girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We um, want to put we want to put that 10 year old out there on the market for prostitution. Yeah. That sounds like a good idea. It's Jesus. got it's got her dealing with her issues. It's got him dealing with his issues. And then it's got that little bit in the middle where, you know, this town is fucked and he's a much more educated man and he feels yes. like. Feels like the knowl, you know, them having knowledge of the outside world will help. Is very it, important. Yeah, I, I liked yeah. how passionate he was. It, it made me think of a lot of that kid. I really liked that went with him when he dropped him off. That the guy kid was, was cool. super yeah. cool. Yeah, dude, I liked because he was a dummy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he, but he was, was a, and they played him the, as a dummy, dude. It's that classic character, but like he yes. was so earnest and like it he, didn't feel pain, like nobody. He gave it to him straight. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what I liked about it. The yes. way the other characters reacted to him was what made his character work. Exactly. No, he voice. felt like a Clint Eastwood type of sidekick character mm-hmm. done the way that those characters should be done. Yeah. I, I've never liked like the Eastwood sidekick characters for the most part, except for Gran Torino. I liked that kid. Sure. But uh, this kid, I sure. liked him a lot. I was really sad to see him. Yeah, he, just, he exited immediately. Yeah, and, then, and I was like, no, no, no. I want the three of you to go on this journey together. This could be a lot of fun, you know? You've got someone to talk to, for one thing. Yes. And, like, you can learn this kid. Like, you can teach this kid, you know? Yeah. It's... One kid at a time, I guess, for him. But like, I, I did like that, like... The kid is just like, no, no, like I can come with you. You need me to come with sure. you because I can fight, you know, and it's it's bad where you're going. And he's like, no, man, you need to go find your own way. You know, and I liked that it, what, there was no malice. No. There was no bad breakup or anything like that. He genuinely thought going with that wagon train was a better deal for that kid. Yep. Um, And I liked that the kid was like, well, at least take my gun. You know, yeah. uh, I thought that was great. Yeah, that was that was a good that was a good part. That little like, that whole stretch right there was really good from when they enter the hunter town to uh I think the movie picks up with the whole like guys trying to grab the pro- the kid for prostitution sure. and stuff yeah, yeah. and then we get to the hunter town where you see how crazy the wild west is. Yeah, the buffalo the guy how gross the buffalo oh, trade was there. That yeah. was so <laughs> uncomfortable. It, it was really strange. was. They yeah. did a really good established attention in that scene. I, I thought that was really good. Um just everything about that town. I was just like, you yeah, no, the go. Atten- the attention to detail and how people lived and stuff was all was very good. I liked it. Like, like I, I, I talked about the the wagon train. I thought the wagon train was fascinating. Yeah, you like know? the that, wagon broke and, and it was just like so we're gonna quick. die. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like he had to put the horse down. He's like, well, we're gonna die. And oh, then, dude, um, I, I did, maybe it's because I've been playing a lot of Red Dead Online. But every time a horse dies, I just walk up and shoot it in the head. <laughs> yeah. And I'm just like, oh wait. You know, and then, uh, dude, that's all he did. He just walked down the hill, pulled the gun out, and shot the horse. And I'm yeah. just like, yeah, dude, that's what Westerns taught me. Mm-hmm. You know, um, yeah. And then we finally got a scene. Well, okay, let's talk about the girl. Just he finds the fucking, the girl is really interesting. Yeah, he finds the girl in like just by happenstance. Yeah, and uh, and then basically he's like, because he comes across I'll help that... her, but everybody in the army is just like. I don't know what do you what do you want us to yeah, whoever who, was in charge of her is dead now and like I don't know what do you want us to do a lot of it made they me, told me to come here oh well a lot of the way the army deals with it made me think of that uh god I can't remember the name of the movie right now but uh I think I talked about it on the podcast the the Christian Bale film where he has to escort the uh the the Indian family yeah you may have talked about it um god I can't remember the name of that movie but like she, she speaks natives or something like that. That yeah. movie's really good. Um, she speaks but, uh, a Native American, like uh, a Native American their, language. I'm their, not sure which one it was. Tri- I think it was Kiowa. Uh, mm, might have been Kiowa. Yeah, I don't um, remember. But uh, I, the way they treated her character reminded me a lot of the way the ca- the Indian characters were treated in that movie. Where like the, in- the, the, the the military can't be bothered with this right now. We've got other shit to do. Yeah. Um, it made me, it made me think of that part. Um, I liked that she wasn't an American that got, you know, yeah, quote she was unquote, a American German at the time. Immigrant, that yeah. She was, she was, was it German or German, Dutch? German. Was it Dutch? Yeah. Uh, German. Okay. Yeah. yeah. She was, she was German that got abducted. So he speaks a little bit of German, but he doesn't speak any. 
I keep wanting to say Osage, and I don't think it's Osage. Yeah, I don't remember. Um, but yeah, she's she she speaks mostly that, but then she starts as her she, character develops. She, she starts some, speaking yeah. more and more German, and she somewhat remembers her fa- her old family. But like for that all part intents, was for really all intents and purposes, she like has been raised Native American, and yes. now all of a sudden he's like, well, nope, well, well, not him, but the I guess the fucking army was like, well, you're going home. It's like cool dude yeah so we do finally i was wondering if they were ever going to have her interact with any uh native americans and they finally did that was a good little scene although that sandstorm was kind of weird um yeah that sandstorm was a uh, yeah whatever plot and, device uh, it was a plot device it's and all you it, it, you it's their relationship it's her remembering her moving on him having to move on them realizing that they belong together and that's the whole movie. It's a very simple movie. It is. And that's, I didn't not like it. It's no. just, there was not a lot there. No, and there it's wasn't almost a lot by of, design. There wasn't a lot of meat on that bone. It was supposed to be very sparse and mm-hmm. I got it. That was, that was cool. I, I liked that. It was just a simple bare bones movie, but there wasn't enough for me to be like, yo dude, this knocked it out of the park sure. because I've seen other simple Westerns like that. Yeah, and, and I, don't need, I don't need to, twists and turns, but I think no, I need, I don't need any slang bang action with, the, no. with that kind of, with that kind of movie. I needed, I don't know what was missing from it, dude. It's just, it felt like we kind of got thrust into it. Yes. Like it felt long and drawn out, but it also felt like we were thrust into it so quickly. Like we were moving from plot point to plot yeah. point to plot point to plot point, but nothing was really going on. And it's like, maybe it was just the lack of characters, like meaningful characters. Yeah. Um, in that lack of dialogue between the two main characters, there's a lot of quaint scenes that are very adorable between the sure. two. Um, I liked when they were riding through the uh, the native uh, the, 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 the 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 German immigrant town. Or yeah, what? No, uh, dude, that was really good too. But um, that's what's so. This see, this is what's so weird. Everything we're talking about, like, oh, that was good. Oh yeah, that was good. But like, it's like what? That's that's what I'm saying. I can't yeah. figure out what's missing. Uh, that part where it's not greater than the sum of its parts. Like, that that's part, the problem. Yeah, that's the problem. Yeah. Exactly. Um, that part where they were going through the uh, enemy controlled territory or oh, whatever, yeah, and yeah. Uh, he was like, "Hey, what's that song that you're singing?" Like, and it's you can tell that he's not really trying to keep her calm because yeah. she seems cool. He's trying to calm himself down, and yeah. you know, just like, "Hey, let's let's sing a song together." Yeah, like the like you know? the the kid they brought with them from that other town told him, like, "I don't know if you should be going through there." Like, that's yeah, don't go through there. It's Native American. I want to say what he said, but I won't. It's Native. <laughs> it's Native. Of- yeah. I, not that I want to. I was just going to say. Yeah, yeah. We, because, God damn it! Why am I because that's myself? the line. But they were that's going through fine. Native American territory in that in yeah. that area before they get to where they're trying to go, and uh, yeah. Yeah, and, uh, that part reminded me a lot of. Uh, there's a scene in the uh, 310 to Yuma remake with uh, Russell Crowe where they're talking about. I think it's. Uh, I didn't watch it. It's really good. One day I'm you gonna gave make, you I'm gave gonna, it to. I me know you didn't watch. You're too busy it. watching Firefly. I watched Cool Hand Luke instead. And Firefly. Firefly. I gave you a bunch of shit that time. Um, no, one of these days you come up. We'll watch 310. Um, but there's this scene where um, they have to go through uh, Native American territory. Uh, I think it's, I think I want to say, I want to see it's Cherokee in mm-hmm. that movie. I can't really call the tribe, but uh, it's Russell Crowe's just like, you know, what you want every gun you can get. Those guys that he's like, those guys that stayed, they stayed to fight. And that's essentially what the kid tells him. He's like, yeah, most of them left, but yeah, like the ones are that you don't want to go there, dude. And I, I liked that because it's, it's like, Dude, it's not safe out here. Yeah, they um, and it it really they, they when do he a was, great job of showing that it's not safe anywhere for any reason. There was a little bit of good um, man or nature. There's a, a a lot of really good storytelling just through the news that he was reading and how people responded to that news. And I, I so he really was talking about his... like Indian reservations and in one of them. And then he was talking about like Mining federal, federal and news and stuff and news. people being yeah. pissed off about that. Yeah. About the like government. Tex- screwing Cause like up. Texas yeah. had to do certain things if they wanted to join the union again proper. And yeah, well, and that was, off. that was at the prime time when, when the Republic of Texas had, I think the Republic of Texas had dissolved by that point. And had been a part of the Confederacy and was now trying to apply to the Union. Well, they were and, independent for a little bit. And yeah. They, they, they still hold, which 
I was a dude. I we, was just talking about this with yeah, a friend of mine because they they're on apparently an entirely yeah. different power grid than the rest of the. Yeah, country. they still they still hold apparently when they join the union again, uh, the the right to secede if they wanted to, but they can't, and it, they would never be able to. No, in any meaningful way. Um, on a farmland. Yeah. And, anyway, <laughs> uh, and that, yeah, that's the thing they have going on. But it's I very mean, interesting, though. It's very yeah, it is very interesting, and 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 that's why they can they can be like, no, we don't want to deal with federal um, regulations on our on our power system, and that works great. Yeah, and that, <laughs> and yeah, that's that's paid off. Um, and again, also just just for the record, so we don't sound like total assholes. Fucking shout out and hopefully thoughts and prayers. But yeah, I I I hate to be that guy, but like seriously, everybody out there in fucking Texas, man, sorry. Yeah, I have a very good friend that lives in Dallas, and like I I asked her the other day how she was doing. I tried to check in on her, you know, and she she said she still had power and everything was good. good. And uh, just you know, it's my 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 family used to live outside of Houston. Um, and yeah. they, they lived mm-hmm. there yeah. during the during flood. Their, yeah. They, yeah. Shit. Bad shit. Ha- it seems like California, Texas, and Florida, man, they can't, we get can't away catch from a break. Yeah, yeah. We can't catch a break. Um, so yeah. Sh- like, so seriously fucking hope everybody's safe out there. Yeah. No, we're not, we're not discussing, we're not down talking the no. state. We're just talking about the interesting, the history uh, the, and how the, the it still is country. relevant to today. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's amazing. It's, it's yeah. fascinating that, that, uh, Texas is, uh, pseudo independence i want to call it and that was some of the fun little like um like side storytelling with how yeah. people reacted and like you know the the, with the, the yeah, union with the army union was there showing yeah. up and being mm-hmm. yeah and being like no you gotta do things our way and they're like we're not doing it your way yeah um and that plays into the the buffalo town which yep. was my favorite part of the movie yeah that was um, that was crazy I, I thought that was really great with the suppression of the news. I'm like, no, you're going to read he, the news about our newspaper. town where I've talked about how awesome I am. I am, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> mm-hmm. um, <laughs> and he's like, I, I, I liked it because, like, I don't know, maybe it's because I love I love movies about the news. I love movies yeah. about reporters. News and knowledge. Yeah, investigation, and, and, yeah. you know, um, it's – I love uh, – Presence, all the presence man is one of my favorite movies. Um, uh, uh, another movie, another, called, Tom, another Tom Hanks movie about the fucking news that I still think is good. Is the Post is also very good. I talked a lot of shit about it. I did watch. The Post. Did you watch it? Finally, the Post is very good. It's pretty good. That's what I'm saying. Good. We can. Shit. I just I, he it's, can it's, make Ready Player One, but he can also, while he's doing it, shit out something like the Post. Exactly. It's insane. Exactly. Exactly. Ex- well, he can make the Post and then shit out something like Ready Player One. <laughs> sure. Um, sure. Sure. I, I just I refuse to recall okay. yeah, the yeah, Post. Yeah. It's which, just like it's I, just that in the small amount of time that he had like in between shooting yeah. fucking ready player one that he made that yeah yeah anyway it, very impressive um it's just i and I, I maintain it like I'm, I'm just i'm just tired of spielberg constantly chasing that oscar I, I you've already got a shit ton of a man just make some fun adventures for once sure you know like let's step away from the same dramatic bit of, we're taking a break here from from the news of the world um but maybe that's just what he's into these I, days. I, I in dig his older it. Age. I dig it. I can I can get behind that, dude. But like, not everything has to be this. Like, I I don't know. I just I think back to like Jurassic Park and mm-hmm. ET and all the yeah. things that were so big and so cool. You know, the, the Goonies. You know, it's maybe he thinks it's just a younger man's game. I don't think it is, dude. Not when you got chops like that still to this day. I agree. Like I didn't see Ready Player One because I hate that fucking story, but it's still Do you think JJ like Abrams is going to make movies again? No. <laughs> I think he's going to start producing okay. and that's fine. Dude. I think that's fine too. Stop starting projects and not finishing them. Sure. Um, okay. that's the only thing I could say because I think JJ is perfectly competent. No, I like, I, well, I, I, say, I like a lot of, I JJ liked, Abrams I liked movies. most of lost. Yeah. Uh, and I know we only directed the pilot, but yeah. the pilot was really fucking good. Um, I also really liked, I still like super eight. Yes. I what do you still, mean you still like super eight? I, I read the other day that everybody was like super eight sucks. They're just oh. trying to recap. They're just trying to cash in on that Amblin. Oh, sure. And I'm just like, are we really like shitting all over Super oh, 8 do right we, now? Oh, do we go backwards because he did Rise of Skywalker? Which, I think like, that's exactly what's yeah, going like on, like it's a dude. piece of crap. I think that's like, exactly what's going on. on. But like, let's not take away his good stuff. Yeah. You know, that's how I feel about it. I I, I genuinely I mean, Ryan Johnson I mean, came out with fucking Knives Out like right after like, 
First of all, Knives Out's a good movie. Jedi, but you know he's still out there, fucking just like moved on with his fucking life. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. And that's what I feel like JJ needs to do here. I think I, I don't think he's gonna make another. I think if he does, it's gonna be a while. I'll Unless agree. I'm missing. Some I just news. wondered because I thought that he was gonna be the next guy to just like, and they were never. I, I don't think he, I don't think he was ever gonna hit that level. But I I he. He still gave me a fun time watching the Star Treks and the Super Eights and, and that stuff. You know what I mean? I think the the Star Treks and Force were Awakens decent. is a good movie. The Star Treks were decent. Uh, Force Awakens was better. Yeah. Uh, I think the only the, the the Star Trek that I enjoyed the most was unfortunately the, the we both enjoyed the most was the one that everybody shit on the what? most. Was it Beyond like just annihilating? No, I think everybody hates In the Darkness. I thought Beyond was the one that everybody shit on. I think over. it's just because everybody was tired of him and Into Darkness was the last one. Oh, I don't God. think that anybody's actually seen Beyond. That's a shame. Because it's so fucking good. That's a shame because like, Beyond strikes that perfect balance like the old like the old again, Will Shatner one. Exactly. Did. I get it. The Enterprise blows up fucking again. Fucking. Uh, For the second time. Third. Well, second. It doesn't blow up in the first movie. Sure, it survives sure. the entire it does, film. It is never destroyed in the first one. You're correct. It just gets beat to shit, which happens all the time. And the they blow up all the aliens. See, the thing is, is out of context, you say they blew up the aliens with Beastie Boys. Yeah, but you they do add a bullshit Star Trek explanation to it. Yes, it's a pop song. But that bullshit Star Trek explanation and, has existed for decades. Yeah, and like unfortunate. Maybe it's okay. I was gonna say unfortunately. I like how we've entirely pivoted here. <laughs> Whatever. I was gonna say unfortunately, but no. J.J. Abrams loves Beastie Boys, so it was he does. Ins- it was inserted. He loves in- Beastie Boys and he loves Star Wars. Yeah, it and was- that was the big. <laughs> the Star Wars love is what really messed up his Star Trek. Film. Sure. So it was inserted into Star Trek 09, right? Yes. And got some Beastie Boys there. Whatever. And it was also in Into Darkness. Sure. Uh, there was a there so was like a Beastie it was Boys part of point. this new Kelvin universe anyway. Yes. And the fact that Justin Lin, right? Justin Lin um, and uh, Simon Pegg. And Simon Pegg and, and whoever wrote with Simon Pegg, which we we said this a million times while we discussed that movie. We really need to learn that guy's name. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, the, you know, I'm, I'm glad that they kept that around. And the fact that it wasn't even through Kirk, it was through another character that, like, it worked. And not only that... I am a big Futurama fan, which is just making fun of Star Trek. And Beastie Boys are big in Futurama, in Futurama. as well. Dude, the whole movie. So, like, movie. it worked for me. Yeah. But I guess out of context, you say they blew up a bunch of aliens with Beastie Boys music, and you're just like, that movie's stupid. Yeah. The, yeah. Dude, like, you can just be like, eh. But there's so much good Star they Trek They broke the in characters up. Yes. They got the best pairings together to do Star Trek-y things. Yes. Where, like, one episode would have been these two characters are in trouble. Yep. And then, like, by the end of it, they're friends or whatever. And, like, yep. we got a bunch of little Star Trek episodes and one bigger story in that movie. Mm-hmm. And I'm a big Star Trek and Darkness fan. I'm a fucking idiot. But <laughs> Beyond is way, way better. <laughs> Beyond like, is the so best good. one. Beyond is the best mm-hmm. one. I, I love that movie. It's I too bad they're not going to make fantastic. another one. No, it's really sad. And now I heard that the brakes have been put on the Tarantino movie. Yeah. And I'm like, I think it's, why? They're, they're, I they're was focusing so on these fucking shows that for whatever Stop. reason people like them. Stop. What is the... I, I would love to see the... the should the, we just watch Picard? No. I don't want to, but maybe we should just see what's going on. Why do people like it so much? No, no one likes it. I, they, dude, they do. That's why they keep making it. <laughs> people like it people like discovery if we're lot. gonna watch it you're gonna pay for it no i have a vpn we'll watch it on fucking Canadian. <laughs> we'll, we'll watch it on canadian netflix i refuse no we'll vpn to canada <laughs> no i'm not i'm not even I'm not, right I'm not your cutting name this, right now yeah, I'm, not, I'm not cutting this out <laughs> I, i'm not doing anything illegal i'm <laughs> vpn and into canada that's it Um, You do have a Netflix subscription. I do. Yes. Anyway, (laughs) what are we talking about? News of the world. We like news. Yeah. I I like, I like news movies, dude. And that part where he was like, no, the truth is what's important. I just, I don't know, man. It's, it was good to see some integrity in the news. I've never been an old West kind of guy, but I I always have been very intrigued with like how the world worked back then. That was fascinating. Cause like I'm, 
Yeah. Because like, I always thought it was just the Pony Express. I've been in an, I can't even remember what it was like when I was, well, even when I was a kid, every night I could find out what was going on in the whole world, basically. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And like uh, now, six and 11 when some, yeah, when something happens, I find out about it immediately. Yeah. So like the fact that you just, had to wait, that months. is my favorite parts of, of thinking about like older time periods. Mm-hmm. Like I'm not infatuated with like being a cowboy. I'm just kind of like, yeah, it's probably, probably suck to be honest. But and it, uh, it did. <laughs> Being a pirate was all, dude. Scurvy, son of a bitch. Um, but anyway, so that Getting so hit that by a cannonball. So that I'm shit really. <laughs> yeah. So that shit really worked for me. But overall, for whatever reason, a movie that, from all accounts, we think like this part's good and this part's good and this part's good. Just you put them all together and it was just Something kind doesn't of doesn't hold it together. It was just kind of a uh, time. There was no. Nothing tight, yeah, like you said, nothing really tied it all together. There was yeah. not a bow on top. It was kind of just like that was neat, yeah. And I feel like that's the way I was, I was like, okay, all right, all right. Like, I, I wasn't not satisfied by it, but like, I don't think I was just like, yeah, yeah for, it, for, it, for a Friday, like, I think I watched it like on a Friday night, like a little movie night. I was, yeah, it was perfectly fine. Yeah, could have done a lot worse. Oh, yeah, could have watched Tenet exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you know <laughs> by the way Tenet's the worst movie we're going to talk about tonight sure yeah um, well by far I yeah dude uh, yeah that's what I think that's what I said I was like I could have done way worse shit than watch this movie oh yeah Um, sure. I, I I did enjoy it I just there was no Greyhound dude it was definitely not Greyhound another yeah. simple movie character driven mm-hmm. yeah uh, a lot of boring patches yeah, but God, what a it, it, Greyhound's such a good fucking movie. Yeah, just um, another Tom Hanks really involved kind of film. Exactly, yeah, mostly so. Tom Hanks film. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, dude. I, 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 I think people should watch News of the World. Um, I would really like to hear other people's thoughts on News of so the like, World. So, like, ca- like you were talking about Captain Phillips, and and I would I tend to agree with you that it was it was also like a. Um, it was also pretty bland and kind of forgettable. What this movie didn't have that Captain Phillips had is that scene right there at the end. You know what I mean? Where Tom Hanks was really flexing that old acting muscle that where they finally get him off of that little fucking, what's the word I'm looking for? Dingy. Yeah. Dingy. There we go. Off that little dingy. And, and you know, they had like real nurses asking him questions and he's just like, I'm Tom, Tom Hanks. And I act <laughs> that shit actually really worked for me. But the rest of the movie, I was kind of like, eh, whatever. But, uh, it was missing something, something yeah. to grab onto every little bit we can say was good. But like when, when he goes back for the girl, I expected some kind of recompense and there was, he was just like, Oh, I'm just going to take her. Yeah. You know, and I'm like a little, yeah, a little bit of emotion there for sure. Um, you know, how he finds her, yeah. how they react to him. Yeah. Like, sure, sure. That's how I felt. So like, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Like even another like pretty boring bland movie. I've never, I never think about like yeah. it had one thing that I remember this movie. I'm just kind of like the time period was cool. Yes. <laughs> like that's about it. Yeah. Um, yeah, man. I I think people should watch it. Sure. Why? I mean, why not? Yeah. Again. You could not... do worse. You could do so much worse. Way worse. Watch Tenet. You could watch Tenet. <laughs> We're just going to keep burning <laughs> Tenet all night long. Fuck that movie. <laughs> that's, that's what we should title the episode. Fuck that movie. Remember, <laughs> remember when we used to be mad at Prometheus? Oh, God. It's like a movie that like people wanted to say made sense, and we were like, you're dumb. Yeah. Like They probably had a point. If there's anybody defending Tenet, like, come on, bro. The, the people get that a, defended get a Tenet, life. The people that defended Tenet are the same people that defended Tenet. You think? I, I guarantee it. I guarantee it. I feel like Ridley Scott fans and Nolan fans are, are at an intersection on a lot of films. And I feel like this is one of those. Everybody should go back and listen to our alien covenant uh, review, (laughs) but you you have to listen to the very end. Yeah. Wait till the very end. (laughs) You have to listen (laughs) to the very end. You'll hear credits. That's not the end. You'll hear the music. That's not the end. Oh, that movie sucks. And I love it so much. (laughs) 
<laughs> we're not gonna pull that with Tenet. No, just in case you're wondering. No, that's not happening again. That movie fucking sucks. Where we talk shit about it for an hour long episode, and then at the end. We have to add in when we decide to turn the mics back on and decide that we actually really liked it. I haven't listened. I haven't listened to that in forever. Oh, me. I remember either. it being very funny. Me neither. No, because I remember when we came to the realization we were very many beers in. Yeah, we had turned off. We were done with the episode. We were totally. We done. decided to turn it back on because we're like, no, the people need to know well, the like, truth. Like we were laughing so hard because we were talking about all the dumb shit that we enjoyed and some of the genuinely good shit that we enjoyed. Yeah, and we were just like. I think I like that movie. And you were like, I think I love that movie. <laughs> <laughs> and we started laughing and we're like, turn the mics on, turn the mics on. <laughs> we're not pulling that with Tenet. No, and, Tenet uh, just new- fucking sucks. <sighs> and News of the World uh, is, is a decent film. Um, it is a decent film. I, I think it's just a new Tom Hanks movie comes out and like, you're like, oh, it's this, you know, it's this little thing. And we've been waiting on this movie and eh, eh. I don't know. We'll be right back. <laughs> we'll be right back after these messages. Jay Burchell here. If you uh, if you're if you're really looking for a, a, a decent meal for a good price, I, uh, I I really I can't recommend more the the buck and under menu from uh, from from Del Taco. That's a great meal. Um, I've I've survived quite a bit. Off of the uh, the half pound bread bean and cheese burrito. What a great! That's a great price for a great meal. Half pound bread burrito from Del Taco. Buck and under menu. Wow, what a great deal! <laughs> and now we continue with our podcast. Welcome back. We're back. <laughs> Here we are. Moving right along. Uh, anyway, <laughs> what a commercial break that was. Damn, can you believe the things? Can you believe that it's only been th- three years since the last <laughs> time we had a commercial break? <laughs> and we're still airing the same commercials. It's true. One is in very no, poor I taste mean, they, they, because uh, he's passed on. <laughs> uh, uh, apparently, I'm not going to play that one. Apparently, uh, apparently, I might. Apparently, apparently they were so happy with the results they got from the last time they sponsored us. They reached out again. So. You know, dude, like, honestly, we should just start doing our own fake ads <laughs> we again. Should, we should was, it was fun the first time, man. I, I volunteered fun. to record new fake ones. Anyway, we're back from our commercial break. <laughs> um, well, we left off with, uh, with a dry uh, kind of Western. And now, Josh, I think we should talk about a dark comedy very dark comedy uh so dark i didn't laugh very much <laughs> you're right and i normally laugh my ass off at dark comedies uh let's talk about the kid detective kid detective we saw that we saw the trailer for that movie and we were, when we thought yeah i like that adam brody but i don't know what's going on with well, that it was it is was, that like mystery team or, or i got i got kind of a, a brick meets uh mystery team vibe from it and that's exactly what i got yeah. Um we decided on we decided on Psycho Goreman initially, but yes. we ended up circling back around to Kid Detective. I'm still trying to get you to watch Shadow in the Clouds. <sighs> they want twenty dollars. I know. That's the audacity. <laughs> they dude. want twenty dollars. The audacity. How dare you charge like, and it's made I, by like, red I box. Same, yeah, I feel the same. Can way. I go to a red box and get it? <laughs> If we can rent it out of a red box. Hang on. Yeah, you look that up right now. I'm going to go into The Kid Detective while Ryan researches The Shadow in the Clouds. Um, The Kid Detective is a kind of adult. God damn it. I'm terrible. Normally, I'm the one doing the research because I'm bad at talking. Um, You can rent Shadow in the Cloud for $1.80. Or you can get it rent on demand straight from Redbox for six bucks. Okay. We might have to watch Shadow in the Cloud, but we have to rent it straight from uh, Redbox. I got a blue Because they wanted $20 on Amazon, right? That's insane. Yeah. You cannot charge $20 for that movie. It has 235 ratings on Redbox, where only grandmas go. (laughs) 
and it and it <laughs> and it has two stars. So you know it's got to be good. If you're uh, if you're unhappy with the dollar eighty you spent to watch it out of the red box, Jesus, you know it's got to be good. Uh, Jesus. All right, Ryan. Did I ever talk about Angel Has Fallen? I must have. No. I think I did. No, you no, never I, talked about Angel Has I Fallen. I must have. No, you didn't. You may have blurbed it, but the I pro- don't think we had a link. The problem is, is you don't. Th- what I wanted to point out was you never want audience and critic to be too close. You don't. You want one polar opposite to the other. Angel has fallen had like an eighty something percent audience rating and like a forty percent critic, and I was like, gorgeous. "Oh, it's gonna be good." That's gorgeous, and it fucking was. That's, that's it. Mag- was no London has fallen. <laughs> But it was still pretty good. Buster Scruggs. No, I know we talked about it because I I made a point that Buster Scruggs was the bad guy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We did talk about it. We're not talking about Shadow in the Cloud. We're talking. Ryan, set up Kid Detective because I did a piss poor job. We're talking about Kid Detective. Kid Detective is a dark comedy with, and this is the premise. I'm going to explain it to you right now. A former kid detective who set up a detective agency as a kid in a small town was basically famous for solving a bunch of small... He was the hardy boy, yeah. the Nancy Drew of yeah. his small town. Yeah, he, he solved a lot of small town mysteries. The missing pig, the missing money, fucking... Somebody's, who robbed this shop? Who robbed the candy store? Yeah, yeah. whatever. And, it, and, and, and he never gave it up, but not in like a silly way like mystery team was. Yeah. It was more like now he is a private a detective private investigator, yeah. and he's in his thirties and he's just can't recapture that magic. No, a tragic thing happened in that town that he kind of feels responsible for. No for, spoilers on that one. Yeah. And cause people need the, to watch this. The movie. town is kind of like, it's not what it used to be. He's not what he used no. to be. And he's kind of stuck and he's got substance abuse problems. Yes. Um, but cue up. He's still solving these weird, dumb, like, where's my cat? And, and did uh, I think my, my friend... friend train with the New York Rangers yeah. or, or, <laughs> or whatever it was? Yeah. yeah. And, uh, Hugh, there was a murder in town and, uh, the, the, the kid who got murdered, his girlfriend wants him to, to solve the yeah, case. She, the she helped him out. He nowhere. helped her out back in the day. She knows he's good at his job. She wants him to come back and yes. help her out. Um, so silly, of, silly premise, but it was done very earnest. It was done extremely earnestly and not to its detriment. I feel like you could do a plot like that seriously and it comes off terrible. And this was done perfectly. Uh, like I said, when we first the started talking about The perfect level it, of like self-aware, like how absurd it kind of is. Adam Brody is fantastic in this movie. Um, Absolutely. I, I, he's a guy that I, I told you, I keep forgetting the name of, but every time I see him, I'm happy to see him. Mm -hmm. And I really enjoyed him in this movie. He was fantastic. Yeah. We've been seeing, and we've been seeing a lot of them. So yeah, he was in, he was in ready or not. We obviously talked about him in ready or not. He was in Shazam. I want to see the movie he just did. uh, I think it's love and monsters. He was in. Oh, um, it's, it's kind of a Shaun of the dead kind of thing, except they're okay. monsters, not zombies. Yeah. He was in promising young woman. I think that's him. Um, which we haven't seen promising. Young woman. That one, yeah. Uh, uh, and he was, uh, like I said, Shazam and, and then this, and we, we, like I said, we watched this trailer, didn't know what to think of it and then gave it a shot and holy shit. It pays off. He, uh, he, him cast in the right role, especially after ready or not, like, he can just nail like it's not it's not too gritty. He's not too sad. That, uh, I, I want to call it ennui, you know. Yeah, kind of like uh, that malaise of being, you know, middle aged and not living up to your dreams. It's the Kyle Kinane joke. Do you ever wake up and realize that your dreams are lies? <laughs> and I loved him in the OC. We've never done a we've never done a Ryan talks about the OC. That uh, right, Ryan talks about the OC is a thing <laughs> that has been going on since the day that I met Ryan and would take him to Del Taco on drunken evenings. When sure. he'd be hanging out and he'd be like, you want to go to Del Taco? And I always want to go. It was always, it was always a dangerous affair, not just because of the alcohol, but because, <laughs> because of the neighborhood. We lived in. <laughs> no, well, not only that, but also because Josh's car was infested with black widows. There was one black <laughs> widow in my car. There was one black widow. Uh, we were dumb. 
Um, but yeah, to no. be fair, there was not drinking and driving. To be fair, no, there was no drinking and driving. I was usually so. It was mostly I had already been drinking and I invited Josh over, and then when he got there, would trick him into taking me to Del Taco. <laughs> it would trick me by going <laughs> like, Josh, you like Del Taco? <laughs> yes, I still like Del Taco. You should take me to Del Taco. Well, I want to go to Del Taco anyway. Anyway, the kid detective. <laughs> It's hard to talk about the kid detective because you don't want to give anything away. And there's so much to give away. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's a very dark comedy. There's a lot of good jokes in there, but they are delivered so dryly. So like I said, earnestly that you're not sure if it's, it's an excellent black comedy in that so, way where it's like, you don't know if it's funny or not. Yeah. Like, so he's, he's like, you know, he's struggling. Like he's kind of, he's kind of stalled in his life. But it's not because like he's a burnout or anything. No, like, he is still. Well, I wouldn't say that he burned out. I'd say that he faded away. Sure, and like people to are like the song. Yeah, people are like you know he's got to give it up or whatever. And it and he's just like it could sound silly, but the way he delivers it in in a certain well, yeah scene, when he says the word just, mystery. Yeah, he's yeah. just like I've solved over two hundred mysteries. Like, I solved this and I got the key to the fucking city. Yeah, like I am good at this it is the most ridiculous line that you should be laughing at but the performance is so strong that you're just like yeah that means something you know it's and that's that's what's good about the movie is it like it tricks you into being like this is a real movie it's taken seriously the concept's a little absurd but like overall yeah like he he seems to be equipped for this or is he yeah and but it like, keeps you I feel on like your that's toes. what's good because like that's every good no, uh, private investigate PI noir type of movie yeah. where like is he equipped to handle this? Like normally he's just taking pictures of the of mm-hmm. the cheating the cheating husband cheating wife kind of thing, you know. And it's, it's and then this time he gets he gets the oh shit it's the big murder mystery yeah. or or the big uh, the big uh, town cover up or whatever. And in this one it's it's the big murder mystery. And it's you're you're just like, can he do this? And it leads you on this twisty turny path. And it's at one point you really think like there's some some typical, I want to say typical the red the red movie type of twist to it. Sure. I was gonna say the red herrings, like um, they actually do a pretty good job of of you kind of recognize this might be a red herring, but they do a good job of like making you be like, I don't, you know, I actually kind of don't, don't know. know where this is going. I don't know. At yeah. All. And then you do kind of figure it out before the main character does, but you figure it out right Minutes. before. Yeah. The main, yeah. Like, like as he's figuring out, you get to it before he does. And I feel like it's so perfectly timed with that twist. That it's just like, oh, shit. And then it happens. And then you're like, oh, shit. Yeah. yeah. And then there's a scene of, of of it all playing out. And it's done very well. It's fantastic. Um, like, yeah. So sometimes he's taking it very seriously. Sometimes he's just kind of like over it. Like, and the way that it just unfolds, like sometimes like he just won't go. He doesn't want to do a thing. So like, we got to yeah. work this from another angle. <laughs> And you're just like, he's lost. Man. Sometimes like, he's all fired up and he's going to pursue a lead and that lead shuts him down. That's the end of that thread. Maybe mm-hmm. I'm just going to drink a lot and smoke some weed and do some Coke for a bit. Exactly. And fucking exactly. See where that takes me. <laughs> like it's, it's very good. It, it is it, a it, roller coaster. It rides ride. that tone. It's a very good it roller coaster. It rides that tone ride. very well. It's got some, some good comedy that like, it's oh, not God. forced. It's really just part of. It's so natural. It's just part of his and character. I feel like, I feel part like... of the situation, which is like still pretty di- like not dire, but still pretty dark. But and then just like the fact that like it has a a really kind of dark, true crime kind of feeling. It really near does. the end and and yeah. how it all kind of comes together. It's, it's a like, bit like a true detective light. And then, yeah. And then like right at the end, they still remind you that like yeah. of what the original premise was yes. and how far we've come since the beginning. It pays and they off. they do it beautifully. It pays off. That yeah. that very final scene definitely yeah. pays off and definitely like sinks the kind of final joke in there. Sure. Um, no, like, like when I say I didn't laugh, I'm not saying it's not funny. It's fucking hilarious. It's just that, like I said, so much of it is delivered so well with such earnestness that I feel like the humor gets downplayed 
and it, it you you forget that this is supposed to be a joke. You know, it's. I was really blown away by this movie. I I love. Yeah, it. no, it, it reminds me of like a three billboards or something like that, where like yeah, like, no, like the situation, like three billboards, Fargo. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it has some vi- dude. This could have easily been a Coen Brothers film. Yeah. And it would have been excellent. Um, but I'm glad that it was this tiny little indie product. He's a little indie darling. Yeah. You know, it, it's it's so good. That's. It's another one of those rare gems that you find on the streaming service, mm-hmm. you know, just randomly browsing trailers. Of sure. And, and I believe added. it was at like the Toronto International Film Festival. Whether like, it, it was did, at Toronto, I wasn't yeah. sure if it was Toronto or like Cannes or something. Yeah. Like and, that, and, yeah. It, and it did well. So like it, it didn't come out of nowhere, but, um, but, For sti- me it but did. still, yeah. like, you know, in, in these days, like shit just shows up and you're like, hopefully uh, this is good. To, to reference Brick again, that was kind of what went down with yeah. Brick. Also, if you've never seen Brick, watch Brick. It's a great throwback to the Humphrey Bogart noir era starring Jason, Joseph Gordon-Levitt. Yeah. Actually, watch both of these movies back to back. Watch sure. watch Kid Detective, watch Brick at the same time in any order you wish. Both fantastic indie flicks. Both set in a kind of absurd kid detective format. <laughs> one takes a different, more old-timey route. One is much more of a modern... I keep saying true detective. Don't go into it expecting true no, detective. No, 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 no. It's, it's in that style though. Um, yeah, dude, kid detective is a great movie. Yeah. It keeps you interested the whole time. Keeps you laughing. And then also just, it really hooks it, you in it with really, the, 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 you want to, you, it's weird. It really you, commits to the, to the subject matter. It's, it's a good character piece on Adam Brody's character. Yeah. And you want to be there to see whether he fails or succeeds. Yep. Um, on, on, unlike and what unlike that, that and what that means for him and like where he like he again, needs this win. He needs this win. You know, and it, it's just watching him obsess over it and become so involved and how it ties into previous failures and how this has to happen. He can't let this go. Um, I, it's great. He needs this win, but also some things just you can't change. And, and, it, and, and yes, he is where he is for a lot of different reasons. And uh, yeah, it's just beautifully done. It's like masterfully done. It's very well done. Um, it's really hard to pull off um, the tone of this movie. And it yeah. never I don't think it ever fails on on no. keeping that tone throughout. No, that the movie is very. There's nothing say, that ever feels out of place. I don't want to say bleak because it's not bleak, but no. um, God, and I hate the word gritty, but it's gritty. It's yeah. very raw. It's very. Uh, it has grit to it. Yeah, it's. Ve- I, I want to say realistic. Um, sure, it is a realistic version of what would happen to a Nancy Drew or a, a Hardy Boy, as their reputation grew, as the expectations upon them grew. And and in it, it, it a crazy world where yeah. that happened, like mystery um, team goes for uh, an airplane esque, like Brady Bunch, man child, the Brady Bunch yeah. movie type of like, where it's like this is an absurd thing in in modern day, and everyone just puts up with this and, nonsense, and like yeah. he does not act like he acted as a kid. No, nope. he is if he is acting like a private detective would in this day and age, well, he say, but he just has a fucking background. Yeah. He, he yeah. has a whole storyline behind he's him. He's still where, drinking and, and yeah. fucking trying to, he's, he feels like he's grown up, but he's still stuck on the successes of his past. Well, that, that one point where he's and got failures. all the, 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 the past cases that yeah. he won that are, that are ridiculous. And at one point he's like, they're silly. It's silly. I wanted to say something, but I think it's giving a little don't, bit away. Because I, like I, I feel like yeah. I'm skirting the line with what I'm talking about here. But um, the Hardy Boys and Nancy Drew didn't always fucking bank on solid evidence. That's just all I'll say. Sometimes it's just like, I'm smart, so I figured it out. Exactly. And exactly. It, Boy, it, they sure it did, worked It didn't out. seem like him as a kid. Maybe he... Either he was just a true prodigy, or maybe sometimes he was just somebody gave him a hand, fucking yeah. around. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> somebody gave him a hand up. Um, yeah, there's a lot of that that goes on. God, it's such a good. It's movie. so good. It's so good. Uh, it's- also, the way that it's filmed, um, I like, especially when they flash back and like. When they flash back, the kid parts at, are amazing. The way the color's so saturated yeah. and everything looks bright and happy as it's happening, and then also 
near the end of the movie how that all had kind of juxtaposed a bit yeah, yeah, yeah. with how they had the color of the film and and uh yeah the color grading and stuff that was good stuff it's very very good dude. yeah it's yeah it's weird to see not weird it, it happens all the time but it's just nice to see an indie movie um that like like when we're talking about Psycho Gorman or something where there's so many caveats or whatever and this is just like yeah this is a a, a, Solid. a, a genre of film that they don't do a whole lot of Solid and through still and just is like boom dude um a great movie yeah um highly yeah. recommend that's yeah. that that's I the, felt, I felt that's like the we, gem I feel of like this we episode. needed to get one in here where we yep. were like where we were like hey these are, yeah we went from like don't watch this to like eh, give it a shot and to i feel like we needed to get one in here where we were just like this is awesome please look at it yeah. you know it's and kid detective is great it's on amazon prime uh pretty rent, much anywhere that you can get it pre- yeah yeah, yeah pretty yeah pre- if you can rent rent a movie i think it's on yeah. that now i definitely it's worth the price whatever the price is it's worth it um, I think I paid six bucks for it. Agreed. Yeah. Um, if they, if they make a physical version of it, I'll, I'll buy it. And if not, I'll probably just, buy I it will anyways. definitely be purchasing that film. That was an amazing movie. It's a it, dude. It's like, again, I keep talking about brick, but brick was the same thing. I, yeah. I watched it on a streaming service and then immediately found it on Amazon and purchased it. Um, that's one of the, that's the same situation where I'm just like, no, I, I need to own that movie. It's so good. Yeah. You can, uh, you can rent that for about five bucks. Yeah. It's definitely worth it. Anyway. Um, you got anything else? I think that's, I think that's going to be it for this, watched, for this episode. I watched the dead zone, the dead zone with Christopher Walken. I'd oh. never seen it before. It's a really good fucking movie. I think everybody should watch that movie. Christopher Walken's performance is amazing in it. Um, I feel like he sheds a lot of the meme that he's become in that in in, in, in recent days. I, I love Christopher Walken. And it was cool to see him not be the meme of himself. Like when you're watching Rob Lowe, you know, or, or something like that. We're like, yeah, you're just. It's a Cronenberg movie. Yeah. Yeah. Based on uh, Stephen King. Stephen King. Wow. Yeah. You didn't know that? No, I, yeah, I haven't dude, even heard of this movie. Oh, really? Because no. yeah, because I was talking to you about it earlier, and he seemed like you didn't know, but you didn't say nothing. You could have, I would have talked about it. I was busy. <laughs> Appreciate that. Um, yeah, dude, a, a dude, just a stellar performance from the main char- character. It's written very well. It's directed very well. I, I can't. Tom Skerritt. I don't. Yes, Tom Skerritt's in it for a minute. Oh, for okay. for real quick. Um, Martin Sheen. Yeah. Martin Sheen is. Anyway, great. tell me what it's about, Josh. Okay. Cause I, w- I wasn't going to get in- into it that much. I just sure. wanted to throw a quick recommend. Yeah, just there, give but, me, give me like a, give me like a sizzle. Give me a back of the box. Okay. I'll, I'll give you the elevator pitch. A uh, guy is a teacher. He's in love with his girlfriend. They're going to get married. Everything's going great. He's living a very happy life. Getting into a tragic accident, hurts his noggin. Goes into a coma for five years, wakes up. He's got psychic powers. He can see the future. Oh, shit. And it goes through the whole high, low, and then kind of redemption cycle of of his character where he resents his power, doesn't really want it, but is using it and telling, you know, kind of doing the whole fortune teller bit and then gets in too deep and it fucks him up. So he decides not to do it anymore. And goes back to teaching. And then, like, he has one big glass case. And it's it's well acted all the way through. It is a fantastic performance for Christopher Walken and everyone involved in the movie. Um, I particularly enjoyed the dynamic between his love interest in the in the in the storyline and and him. It's it's almost it's it's a little natural the way that the way that it goes. Like it's I don't want to spoil too much because everybody needs to watch this movie. If you've never seen the dead zone with Stephen King, like me, you know, a big Stephen King fan and also a big kind of horror movie, weird sci-fi supernatural type of fan. Watch that stuff. Like, like watch this movie. It's really, really good. I, 
I can't believe I waited this long to see this <laughs> fucking movie. I'm really right? mad at myself. Right? Because I, I the way that you were it. the way that you were uh, you were describing it, I was like, I bet you I've seen stuff that have like parodied parodied this. There are a lot of parodies of it. Okay. Uh, one that came to mind, especially to me, was the American Dad episode where Roger can see the future. Okay, that's exact, there is that's almost, what I was thinking of. There is almost a shot for shot remake of the very okay. first time because I was like, I know American Dad has done it, and I know that um, uh, South Park has done it. South as Park well. has definitely done it. Yeah. So I was just like, I wonder if it's gonna be that where that came from so they're like you name your favorite adult animation show it's done something like this. sure i think uh bob I mean, the simpsons bob, the whole bob belchers uh, bob Bur- bob's burgers did it yeah um the simpsons the, did it the, the whole s- the entire simpsons thing i was gonna say the whole simpsons thing is just uh film parody film parody yeah, yeah so uh yeah dude i know venture brothers did it i know south park has done it i know american dad yeah. did it i think family guy may have done it as well sure but um everybody else did it go watch the source material because you're gonna yeah. be you're gonna be wowed because it seems corny when you're watching it but the way it's performed and delivered you're like yeah this is corny as shit but these performances are elevating it and the direction is so on point it's such a good flick dude i i'm really kicking myself for not watching it when i was younger i have a serious question what's up christopher walken yes is he better in this movie or balls of fury how dare you make me choose between my two I have, No, I have to make you. I, I got it. I, God damn you. <laughs> He's such a great, deliciously evil villain in Balls of Fury. Oh, God. Balls of Fury is a great comedy. I don't care what anybody says. Um, You're not wrong. <laughs> um, yeah, dude, I, Dead Zone. Okay. It's, it's going to be right. Dead Zone, dude. You've, you've convinced me. There is... He's pretty... Like, he gets a little... He does. He doesn't go full walking at any point in the movie until the very end, and it is so earned and so good. Where he just, he just, he flips starts out. Scenery, he flips yeah. out and starts walking it, and he just, he does that walking yell that he does. Yeah. Where, ah, yeah. Da, 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 da. You yeah. know, where he's got that voice. That it's, cadence. Yeah. It's so good, dude. It's. I was blown away by it, dude. I was really blown away by that movie. I think everybody should see it. If you haven't seen it, please. It's on Hulu. I watched it for free. Or you can, I think you can rent it on Amazon prime. Sure. You could probably rent it anywhere. Please just find it. Just Google search. Google search. You got to just watch, figure out where you can get it for the cheapest. Who cares? They made a terrible FX series based off of it. Starring Anthony Michael Hall. And I watched a bit of it. I thought it was okay. But I didn't know that the movie was this good. You know, I, it's it was great. I loved it. Nor did I. All right. There you heard That's it. That's our closing bit. You heard it here first. <laughs> you heard it here Dead first. Dead Zone. Check it out. Fucking a movie that came out in 1978, 80, I think. I think 83. Mm-hmm. Was it 83? I think so. Oh, God, I thought it was a 70s film. Um, okay. That's it for this episode. We're going to be back next week. We're going to be talking about WandaVision. And we have some other surprises, but we're going to, we have been watching WandaVision. Like prizes. Everybody's going to get a four by four. <laughs> yes. From in and out. <laughs> <laughs> we have been watching WandaVision. Uh, He's but so mad at again, me for that. <laughs> but again, luckily we decided not to talk about it just episode by episode because that shit wouldn't have worked. Who would have known? That shit wouldn't have worked. I mean, dude, I, I still don't know what the hell's going yeah. on. Yeah. We'll be back to report with that. What and a wild uh, ride. other surprises and prizes like a toyota thon um <laughs> you can find us on all major podcasting apps including itunes google i mean apple Podcasts, google podcasts spotify we are on youtube we are mighty fish productions on youtube that's where you can find our original series classic catch-up we've talked about halloween We've talked about Star Trek: The Motion Picture, our upcoming Wrath of Khan our is coming upcoming episode, Wrath of Khan, in our in our Star Trek series. You can find us on twitch.tv slash Mighty Fish Productions, where we're just doing dumb shit. You can find us there doing whatever. We've got that we've got that little setup a little bit more permanently now. Um, and we're yeah, gonna, we we need to get to the swing of that one. Yeah, but we're 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 doing stuff. We're warming up to it. Yeah. At Mighty Movie Pod on Twitter is where you can find out when we go live there, when we have a new video up, or where there's a new episode. Yep. That's what I would point you to if you want to be in the world of the Mighty Movie Pod. And who wouldn't? <laughs> it's such a thrill ride. I'm what done. What a Pandora's box <laughs> of what could be. I'm done. Also, thank you to Del Taco for sponsoring this episode. 
their buck and under menu is still a thing. We're just glad you know. <laughs> <laughs> Jay Parishell has been making his has survived a lot off of the. Okay, his, now you have to put <laughs> Jesus. Christ. Are you trying to get me to do it? <laughs> no, it's already Josh has already played in the episode. We already played it. We already took our commercial break. We'll see you next time. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Bye. Oh, God.